Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. So you're going to have to uh, excuse me for my croaky voice and for not posting for quite a while. Uh, I've actually been quite sick and I'm still recovering as you can probably tell. Um, and yeah, unfortunately I ended up getting COVID for the first time ever in almost what nearly three years or two and two and a half three years so yeah uh it's definitely not been a fun ride and i'm very much looking forward to getting over this um so to help cheer me up and get me into the christmas festive spirit uh today i'm excited to be putting together this super fun uh challenge puzzle from wentworth wooden puzzles so this one's called the puzzle that will wind you up and it's listed as extra difficult. It's only 252 pieces though, but um, I have done uh, one of the challenge puzzles before, which I will which I did a video on, which I'll link up the top. And I think that was a similar piece count and that was pretty tricky too. I mean, doable, but they are challenging and tricky, but a lot of fun. But yeah, when I saw all the uh, Wentworth wooden puzzle Christmas puzzles this year, there were a lot of very cute and fun ones. And yeah, this one jumped out at me. Um, and so yeah, I had to grab it. Um, yeah, so this one um, has is basically like a sort of collage and a semi-repeating pattern of all these like really fun, colourful little Christmas kind of themed or winter themed cuckoo clocks or like, yeah, little, yeah, I guess little cuckoo clocks because it is the puzzle that will wind you up. Um, yeah, and there's little Santas and yeah, lots of little Christmas scenes like little uh, Santa with his reindeers and little uh, wreaths and... Yeah, and lots of clock faces, of course, and yeah, it's, I mean, the details are so tiny and cute, and there's a lot going on. It's really jam-packed with details, so yeah, it's a really fun, colourful image, though, so I'm very excited to put it together. And the thing with these uh, challenge puzzles is, from my experience of doing the other one, is unlike uh, most of the Wentworth wooden puzzles and even other wooden puzzle brands, uh, where you'd normally find like irregular piece shapes along with cute whimsy piece shapes. So normally they'd have whimsy pieces that kind of are little piece shapes that match the theme of the puzzle. Unlike that, uh, these challenge puzzles tend to be made up of like uh, sort of repetitive kind of geometric or abstract piece shapes. So I'm guessing in this one I'm going to find like a range of different piece shapes, but they'll have like a lot of the same ones. Um, because that's just sort of how it connects together with all these sort of interesting piece shapes. But yeah, so that makes it a bit more challenging because you don't have any really, I guess, any unique pieces. There's lots of the same ones. Um, and you have to figure out what, I'll have to figure out what order they sort of go in along with figuring out this crazy jam packed detailed uh, image as well. So yeah, I think it's definitely gonna be challenging, but I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so, I think in a minute, let's unbox this and then look at the pieces and of course, get into some puzzling. So let's take a look at the packaging. So the box itself is just all cardboard and uh, there's zero plastic. And even when uh, this and a couple other puzzles arrived, they came in a cardboard box and uh, even the tape that was used to seal the box was like a sort of recyclable kind of paper tape. So no like plastic tape. So yeah, really, really impressed. Um, so back to the packaging. So we've got a bit of text up here. We've got, or info, we've got the Wentworth Wooden Puzzles little cute little tree logo. Then we've got the name of the puzzle, the puzzle that will wind you up, which I think that is definitely going to be the case looking at all these cuckoo clocks. Then it says by Lena Artbeat. Uh, copyright 2021, Lena Artbeat Studios, licensed by MGL and has the MGL website. And then a bit of text here that says premium quality, laser cut wooden jigsaw featuring a challenging, extra difficult cut pattern. And then we've got extra difficult over here, 252 pieces. And then we've got our entire puzzle image here and a tiny bit of text here that says, the puzzle has an uneven edge as shown. And yes, I um, don't know if you'll be able to see it, maybe a little bit, but you can definitely see it more down the sides. Um, there's little sort of cut out bits, so it's not completely flat or flush. And then I thought the top and bottom was flat, but actually then I realized there's little cut out bits as well along the bottom and top edge. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, I guess that's just sort of, you know, how it ends up when all the interesting like shaped pieces come together. So yeah, kind of 
bit more interesting. So let's take a look at the info around the sides of the box. So we've got, let's spin this around, our lovely Wentworth Wooden Puzzles logo here. And then on this side here, I'm going to have to spin that around as well. We're going to be doing a lot of spinning. Um, we've got the logo up here. Then we've got the name of the puzzle, the puzzle that will wind you up. We've got a number here, which I guess just is referencing the puzzle design, presumably. Then we've got a little mini version of the entire puzzle. We've got 252 pieces and we have the size in millimetres, 360 millimetres by 250 millimetres. We have a barcode and a little uh, warning like choking hazard. And then down here we have a little tagline, ingenious cuts, charming whimsies and devilish fun. So yeah, it's cute. And then what else we got on the bottom side? We've got the logo again. And then on the other side, again, let's do some more spinning. We've got our logo. And then the text here says, Made in Great Britain by Wentworth Wood and Jigsaw Company Limited. And it has sort of like their address where they're based in the United Kingdom. And then again, we have that little uh, sort of tag lines. Ingenious cuts, charming whimsies and devilish fun. So let's turn this over and look at the text and info on the back. The back of the box has this lovely burgundy colour that they put in there. Uh, logo up here so yeah it's nice that they've matched that and we've got quite a bit of info and text on the back here as well so we've got the Wentworth uh, logo here then we have a little light bulb sort of symbol and it says discover the magic of a Wentworth puzzle inside this box you will find one of our premium quality wooden pu jigsaw puzzles made entirely by us from our factory in the heart of the British countryside since 1991 with intricately hand-designed laser-cut pieces, including our charming whimsies, we guarantee this puzzle will delight and tantalise you for years to come. But a Wentworth puzzle can give you so much more, a break from screen time, quality time shared with family and friends, or a mindful distraction and path to well-being. And then over here we have like a little, uh, you know, globe with little love hearts. It's cute. Happy puzzlers, happy planet. We aim to spread happiness and be sustainable in all that we do. So this puzzle is made using wood from forests that are sustainably managed and the box is made from recycled materials. No plastic was used in our packaging process and we are doing all that we can to minimise the energy we use and recycle the waste we create. So that's good. And most importantly, our puzzles are made to last. So whether you keep your Wentworth puzzle as, as a family heirloom or pass it on to others to spread the joy, it is the ultimate in sustainability. And yeah, there's a little recycle logo here. Got a couple other logos here. And then this text here says, whether gifting this puzzle to others or treating yourself, we know that you have carefully selected the puzzle, the perfect design. Our promise to you is that we have taken care to ensure this puzzle will be great, fun and satisfying to complete. So now that I've read all of that, um, let's open this up. Let's open this up and see what's on the inside. Okay, so yep, yeah, the uh, inside of the top of the box, it's pretty straightforward, just a white cardboard. And then we have here our lovely kind of that burgundy, I guess, uh, aubergine coloured uh, drawstring bag with a sort of rope, I guess, drawstring. It has the lovely Wentworth Wooden Puzzles logo. So yeah, there's no plastic at all. The pieces are just straight inside the bag. So excited to have a look at those in a minute. And then I think what else do we have in here? Just this leaflet. Um, oh, there's like a number in the bottom of the box. I'm guessing that's sort of to do with the manufacturing, like so they can track what puzzle this was and when it was made I'm guessing well actually it looks like a date it has 0206 and then it looks like 2022 so yeah but anyway I guess that's not super meaningful to us um, but yeah apart from that the, the bottom of the box is just blank and um, the sides are just the plain sort of burgundy aubergine color as well anyway back to this leaflet um, what do we got here okay so Hand design wooden jigsaw puzzles. Um, yeah, I guess it's just kind of advertising a, like a bit of info about their puzzles. So it's got a few puzzle design pictures up here and another one up here, which looks nice. And it says our unique themed whimsy pieces. And then, yeah, just a little blurb here and their contact details, their logo. And here it's just got, you know, unique whimsy shapes, irregular shaped pieces, precision laser cutting, British made classic. Yeah, so just a bit of promotional material. And then here we've got, um, they do personalised puzzles as well. So this is just sort of advertising that service. Um, relive the memory, memorable moments time and time again. And again, a bit of a blurb. I won't 
read it all. Um, I'm sure you could find this info. You can either pause and zoom in or look on their website. I'm sure they have it there too. But yeah, just some examples of cute cat of people's personalized puzzles and again, their sort of contact details. Okay, so we uh, know what's on the inside of the box. So let's look at the pieces. I've poured out all the pieces from the bag and they're looking very nice and colorful and some very interesting shapes. The other thing I've noticed is um, the Wentworth pieces don't have a very strong smell to them at all. There's just a very, very subtle kind of woody, smoky smell, but it's, yeah, it's not at all unpleasant and it's very subtle. Whereas I've actually done quite a lot of other wooden puzzle brands and they've been quite smoky. So if you've been put off by that, you could definitely try a Wentworth puzzle because it, the smell is not at all intense. It's very subtle. Um, but yeah, going back to the pieces, let's sort of have a closer look at just one of these random pieces. So the back of the piece is just sort of the plain uh, wood color. Yeah, pretty straightforward. And then the sides of the pieces are this sort of dark brown color. I think that's from the laser cutting. That seems to be pretty normal across a lot of wooden puzzles. They always seem to have a dark edge to them like that. And also the thickness of this, it's quite, um, yeah, strong and sturdy. I've definitely done thicker uh, piece, like pieced wooden puzzles and I've done, I think, thinner as well. But yeah, it seems like a nice medium thickness. Yeah, very strong. Um, but interestingly, Wentworth have said that going forward, a lot of their puzzles, I think, or all of their puzzles are going to be thicker than this. So yeah, that's interesting because I always thought this was quite like a nice thickness anyway. But yeah, it's going to be kind of fun that they're going to make even thicker uh, pieced puzzles going forward. So yeah, interesting, just something to note if you happen to get one of their newer puzzle designs. Um, and then the top is, yeah, lovely and bright. The colors look very crisp and clear and yeah, just really vibrant. And it's sort of um, pretty common printing method, I think, for wooden puzzles. Like I think they call it UV printing where I guess an image is sort of like, yeah, printed onto the wood. Um, so these, this sort of style of printing, it's never completely matte. There is like, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a little bit of sheen. Like they're not super glossy, but there's a little, I guess a little bit of gloss slash sheen. So just something to note, obviously everyone has different lighting where they live and yeah, depending on your lighting situation, you may have some issues with sheen or you might not. So, but yeah, just letting you know. Um, but I haven't had too many problems with uh, puzzles that have this sort of printing on them. It's usually been okay. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say about the piece quality, I guess. But yeah, let's, I guess I might have to, <laughs> push some of these aside so we have some room here so we can pull out a few of these interesting piece shapes and have a look. Um, so I've seen some of these very cute ones here that look like a little house or like a little, I guess, let's turn it over and maybe you can see it better. Like I guess a little cuckoo clock. So very like a little bird house, very cute. Um, so we have lots of those actually, like there's quite because because this puzzle is like a sort of special challenge puzzle, it's made up of lots of repeating, I guess, shapes or patterns. So yeah, we have lots of those. And then we have lots of interesting shaped ones, kind of like the one I showed you before. It almost looks like a abstract butterfly. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So we seem to have a lot of those. I don't know if they're all the same, like this one's a bit different, but that might be an edge piece or something because it's sort of almost got a bit like cut off. So yeah, kind of interesting, but yeah, we have a lot of these, I'll go, I'm going to call them abstract butterflies. Um, and then we have like other pieces like this, which are sort of, uh, that looks like maybe an edge as well because of just how flat it is. But yeah, so very interesting, very abstract. Um, what else we've got? <laughs> this one looks like it has a little, it's a funny little shaped one almost looks like it has little bunny rabbit ears or something. So very interesting. Um, so we seem to have a few of those as well. We'll call them the abstract bunny. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's like, there's probably a few other, I guess, variations in like pea shapes, but I think they're sort of the most common ones that I've seen is like, yeah, little cuckoo clocks and then little funny looking bunny, abstract bunny ears and butterflies, if you want to call them that. Yeah, so there's probably a few other variations, but 
I think this is gonna be a very interesting puzzle to put together. Um, yeah, there's no like, so a lot of wooden puzzles uh, come with like fun whimsy shaped pieces that are usually to do with the theme of the puzzle. But yeah, because this is a challenge, extra difficult one, it's all these sort of repeating, interesting kind of abstract shapes. So yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty tricky to put together, but should be pretty fun as well. Speaking of which, let's take a closer look at the box lid um, and the image. So um, looking at this, I actually have no idea how I'm gonna put this together. Um, I think I'm gonna just do what I do with lots of wooden puzzles where I just flip, like try to spread all the pieces out and flip them over so I can sort of see all the colors, have them all turned to the right side up. But in terms of sorting, I don't know how we're gonna sort it. Such a like busy collage image. We do have repeating elements though, like this sort of yellow clock face and like I think a Santa. So maybe I'll be able to pull some of those aside. I'm not really sure. I'm sort of just gonna, I think I'm just gonna wing it to be honest um, and just see how it goes. And maybe I'll try and find edge pieces since we know there's definitely some pieces that are a little bit different than some of the others, which are probably edges. So maybe maybe edge pieces, yeah, I really don't know. I think it's definitely gonna be challenging and definitely gonna test me a bit, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. So without further ado, I think let's get into some puzzling. So I thought I'd pop in and give you a quick update on how things are going. Um, I'm really having fun so far. It's definitely a very pretty and like fun, cute image. Like there's so many colorful, cute little details. I even just notices like, I think that's a little cat over there. So I keep seeing more and more details as I piece this together, which I didn't notice initially. But yeah, it's like a lot of really fun, cute, Christmassy, festive things going on. Um, but yes, it has definitely been slow going and quite challenging. Um, so to get to this point, which I think is about maybe two thirds of the puzzle, it's taken one hour and 50 minutes, so a bit under two hours. So yeah, pretty slow, because this is only what, 252 pieces. So you, you know, you'd think it'd be quick, but no, it is definitely slow going. Um, part of that time was spent, of course, flipping over all the pieces and then I decided that it'd probably be a good idea to sort them by piece shape, which has definitely been helpful. Um, but yeah, I put all the little houses together and all the sort of weird bunnies and abstract butterflies. Um, yeah, and, but it's definitely been helpful because, I don't know if you can see, but the piece shapes, they do have like a sort of repetitive pattern themselves within the puzzle. So it's, you know, part of the challenge of the puzzle is figuring out what piece shape goes next, but there is like a pattern to it. So eventually you sort of get used to like figuring out uh, what goes next, but that means it is quite helpful to be able to quickly go, oh, okay, I need like um, a bunny rabbit piece. All right, let's go through all the rows of bunny rabbits and that sort of thing. Um, and then of course, yes, with each piece, you need to then figure out, well, what part of, what part of the image is gonna be on that piece. And so, yeah, it's still, yeah, definitely helpful to narrow 
uh, like your search time down by having at least the piece shapes all together and then just being able to go through each row of your piece shape, that piece shape and find the correct piece. But even still, I have actually sort of had, I guess what you could call false fits or where I've kind of not looked closely enough and put the wrong piece shape, like the piece shape was correct, but the image on the piece shape was wrong. But as you can see over here, it can be kind of easy to do because we've got this little house here and this one here and they've got very similar images on them. Like they both have the same clock. So it's the same, uh, they both happen to have the same part of the image pattern on them. They're a little bit different, but yeah, there's been a few instances like that where I've put in the wrong one. And even here, like this clock looks kind of similar to this. As you can see, it is different, but if you don't look closely, you can easily grab the wrong one. So I've done that a couple of times. So at least now I'm aware of it. Um, so that's, yeah, added to the challenge. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I've really been enjoying it. I mean, I'm, you know, I bought this knowing it was going to be a challenge puzzle, but I've been quite enjoying it. It's been very satisfying seeing it to come together and it's quite meditative actually as well. I guess my only con, which you can probably sort of see is that for me personally, there's been a bit of sheen. So I've got like my light overhead and I've also got a bright light over my shoulder just to make things a bit brighter, but yeah, it is causing a bit of sheen. So uh, as you can see, like if I, I've had to sort of move my head around a little bit like this sometimes to just to see this area. But for the most part, as you can see, it's quite bright and easy to see the details. So it's just been that sort of area there. And that's just my own personal experience. Of course, everyone's got different lighting. So uh, everyone's experience can be a bit different, but yeah, I think that's really the only issue and it's not too much of an issue really. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. I've yeah really been enjoying it and I'm keen to, see the rest of this come together. So yeah, I think it's time for a bit more puzzling. I finished the puzzle and it was definitely pretty tricky to put together, but also a lot of fun. And I really love how it's turned out. It's very bright and colorful. And I just think the festive Christmas details in it are just really cute and a lot of fun. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. And it was uh, a little bit time consuming to put together. So the second session of puzzling took 50 minutes and all up, including sorting and flipping all the pieces over, it took two hours and 40 minutes. So definitely a bit longer than uh, maybe a, another wooden puzzle with the same piece count, but that was to be expected since it is a challenge puzzle after all. And I guess for me, some of the most tricky things were that, uh, well, at first I thought the image was a repeating pattern, but it's not, it has repeated elements. Um, so like this yellow clock face, for instance, there's a few of those around, but then when I look closely, I realize the other clocks or images, imagery around it is different for each one. And so that actually tripped me up a bit. I kept uh, finding pieces that would look very similar to each other. So the same piece shape, and then it would have almost a similar part of the image on it. And I end up putting them in the wrong spots. And I did that quite a bit, even after I recognized that as being a 
something that was tripping me up, I did it again. So you might even notice in the end of the time lapse that I end up with this section up here, uh, rejigging things a bit and like studying the image and trying to figure out what was what I had in the wrong order. But I got there in the end and it's all in the, everything is in the right spot now. Um, so that was definitely the, probably the trickiest thing for me. And um, I guess the other thing for me personally was I had to make sure I put glasses on while doing this because there's so many tiny cute little details and like I said because there's some pieces that look very similar to others you really need to study them closely um, so I think in the first session I forgot to wear my glasses and I was squinting a bit so it did give me a bit of a headache but I remembered to wear them in the second session and it made a big difference so yeah I guess if you wear glasses definitely wear them while doing something this detailed um, or you might even want to use a magnifying glass as well because that would definitely help try and pick out all the tiny details and differences going on um, and yeah, apart from that, I think the only other thing that to note, I guess, is that the surface of these puzzles is not completely matte. There's a tiny bit of sheen and um, I had a little bit of sheen while putting the puzzle together, but it wasn't a big issue. It didn't stop me from doing the puzzle and I had a lot of fun and it didn't really bother me too much, but obviously everyone's lighting is different. So some people might have more sheen than others. So just something to note. But yeah, apart from that, I had a really great time. I think it's a really lovely puzzle, really well made, such a fun, colorful image. Definitely my kind of Christmas image. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. And I think if you're looking for just a fun, puzzle that's just maybe a little bit more challenging than other puzzles, yeah, I would definitely recommend this one. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of this puzzle. Do you think you'd like to do a challenge puzzle like this? And let me know what Christmas or festive puzzles you've been doing these holidays. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore juby where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much. I hope you have a wonderful holidays and see you in the next video. Bye.